Welcome to Ben's Business Podcast, episode number 85. Today I'm going to be talking about the millionaire mindset and a few of the lessons I've been picking up from uh, T. Harb Ecker's The Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. And it's really reminded me a lot of a book I read at early stages in my five years ago in my personal development journey, which was this book here, Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And I've really been reviewing what I've some of the lessons I learned from uh, T. Harv Ecker's book, Secrets of a Millionaire Mind, and some, a lot of them have been reminders, but it's always important to humble ourselves and realize that we're, there, we can learn a lot from different perspectives on, the, on almost the same topic of how, this, in this example, the rich think, how millionaires think, and how they got to becoming millionaires, what got them to there. And one of the, the key lessons that I really want to drive home in this video is just the fact that we we have to work on ourselves for our income to change, for our businesses to change, for our if we if we're an employee to to move to the other side. We have to change internally and be in control of our emotions and and drive be driven not just through our emotions but controlled emotions and turning that into more thought. So we need to be in control of these emotions that come up and when it comes to money and have a, a positive and uh, less reactive response to the subject of money and business and, and making money and, and the way that we've always made money because th these emotions can come from our parents, from school, from how we've been taught from a young age. And there's a, when I first read this, I didn't really get all the information that it was trying to get across, just like the kids of the story that this was, uh, the kid who was telling the story of it didn't really get it at first. But what's been really interesting in my experience of financial literacy and understanding how to grow a business properly has been the, the kind of theory-based information I learned, as well as action, uh, the early stages of my early business career eight years ago now, and returning back to this information and re-reviewing what I thought I knew, but I'm taking a whole different perspective on it. And what I'm coming back to realizing is work harder on yourself than anything. So understanding money and how to use it and not be used by it, not to be a slave to money. And you can even do this running a business. You can, you can be a slave to money and be driven by, by money based on your, like, it's usually two, two emotions as desire or fear. So desire for better, a bigger house and a car, materialistic things or holidays and ways you want to spend your time. You can be of desire and be focused that way. Or you can also be desired that you don't want, you want to be secure and security comes from fear. So what the lesson is there is that most people's mindset around money is driven by their emotions. Emotions are important, but it's in putting this emotion, emotional drive, because it's okay to have desires, towards sort of a logical uh, thinking, using our thinking brain to act on that uh, ultimately. So emotions come first, but then we control those emotions and put it towards thought and thinking and a action from that rather than re reaction from our emotions. Because if we do that, we act from our old self or what got us to where we are today. And if we're reading books like this, we're clearly not where we want to be financially. So if we're trying to better ourselves financially, we need to accept sort of new ways of, of looking at things from what we did in the past. And that's the lesson I'm picking up from this book and Rich Dad Poor Dad is that we do need to let, we need to unlearn a lot of things before we can input and learn and consume new things. So we need to take a, a new look on how wealth is created. It's not about working harder. It's not, a, it's not about, um, getting up early, working late, it's, it's not extending the hours, it's not just that, it's always about working smarter, making ourselves smarter, understanding everything that we can around this process of gen growing a business or, or uh, making money. And what I've learned is how millionaires think versus how poor people think is the rich are bigger than their problems, whereas 
poor people are usually smaller than their problems. So they, they fo poor people focus on their problems, not on the goal that they're wanting to go towards. And this is what holds people back. We, they will get carried away with the, the kind of obstacle in the way versus f focusing on that end result that they're wanting to create in terms of financial success. And by doing that, they never get what they want because they're focused. I, I was talking about a golf lesson. I played golf for the first time in maybe five years. And one of the lessons I got from the guy I was playing golf with was if you focus on that river in front of you, that's exactly where the ball will go from the tee. So I I hit the ball into the river. It's because my focus was at the river, like all this stuff in front of me, thinking I'm never going to hit the ball over this. And it's the same with everything. If we can change our focus to the hole, the flag, versus that obstacle in front of us, that's we go wherever our focus is. So where focus goes, energy flows, whatever you focus on, you move towards. And that ball moved towards that river and went right in there and I had to hit a second from the tee. And the same happens in life and on business. So where we put our goals and keep our focus around those goals is where we move towards. But what tends to happen with the rich and poor is the rich will focus on the goals, the poor focus on the obstacles when they come up and let their problems be bigger than themselves rather than realizing that we can always be bigger than our problems. And that was a big key lesson I learned from Harvecker and the Secrets of a Millionaire Mind. The other lesson is just how committed and big thinking uh, people who end up as millionaires and rich become. They think very big from the beginning. They don't worry about the short term as much. They worry about, the, they think about, they don't worry. They don't worry, they, they think logically about the long term. Whereas poor people who stay poor for their whole life worry about the short term. So that's the big difference. Poor people who stay poor, who never get past a, a, this threshold of poor middle class to rich. The big difference from the leap from poor right over middle class to rich is a change, complete change in the mindset of long term thinking, sac short term sacrifice, long term thinking. So letting life push them about to learn, uh, working for free, doing things for free. Uh, just like in, in the story of Rich Dad, Poor Dad, the, the boys who were being taught a lesson from a, a rich man to be taught, Rich Dad, who was teaching them how to get rich, what made them work for free for him. And there was definitely outside perspectives looking at that, thinking that's like child slave labor. But the, the Rich Dad was actually just trying to teach them that you actually in, in business and to to succeed there's going to be periods of time where you basically feel like you're working for free when you've got a long-term goal and that is what it feels like i've been in business a long time myself and i've uh, recognized that principle of letting go of kind of me and uh, looking towards like getting results for people serving people and the results come later so the sort of indirect way that your your karma comes back or indirect way that the universe gives back to you when you give so it's all about giving and helping and giving value to the marketplace before you receive back. And that's what creating wealth is all about. It's about adding value, not for you, but for others. And by doing that, you automatically get the, the return multiplied over time. But it's that long-term thinking with a positive, persistent mindset that has control over the emotions and, and really realizes that what really committed to what its end result is because all these obstacles will come and the people who don't make it to the goals are end up poor because they they quit. They quit along the way because life pushed them too hard and they couldn't deal with their emotions in that situation. So it's mastering our, our emotions and our brain and our thinking and our mindset around life. And that's that's the big lesson I've learned is it always comes back to working hard on ourselves, becoming mentally fit, mentally strong, and that's how we get there in the end. It's just playing the long game. So I hope you found this useful and helpful and potentially it's, it's given you an insight into how rich and successful people think. Just that wee bit more because it, you might not fully embed that today, but as long as you embed that over time and start to use it, 
it will make the, the, the world of difference to you. So it started to, Rich Dad Poor Dad started to work on me over time and returning to it, I, I recommend if you've read Rich Dad Poor Dad to give it another read because it does seem like a completely different read on the second time. And I do plan on finishing the book and reading it more than more than two times because the second perspective after taking action on what I thought I knew, uh, just realizing that I didn't know everything, I didn't learn everything that I could from the book. So it's it's the same with all type of reading, soaking everything you can out of a v valuable book. And one of those books that you can read over ten times uh, has got a lot of wisdom and value in it. The ones that really feel like you're n you're not learning and is is worth just putting down ones that don't have a much substance to it but one like this just has 10 years of study to to be put into it sh that shows that there's there is real substance in that book and the same with secrets of the millionaire mind so i recommend just uh, working hard on yourself and and, and studying every day uh, but not just studying putting it into action and really observing how these actions and uh, how your results and where they're coming from um, and how your actions are creating these results or, or creating uh, defeat or temporary defeat. And as long as you never quit along these defeats, it will never be called failure and you'll eventually get there in the end if you persist. So thanks for watching. Thanks for everyone who joined me on Facebook and Instagram.